So I want to thank, oops, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming uh, to the newest of our talks uh, in the Eunice Ember Institute London uh, talk ser uh, speaking series, the, our discussion series uh, on design and architecture in Turkish culture. And today we are lucky to have one second, let me just mute. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for showing up at our Eunice Emory Institute Design and Architecture Talk Series. Tonight, uh, we're happy to continue the series and uh, with another uh, interesting speaker, Matt Ilar uh, of Memo London. And today, we will have a discussion about uh, the architecture of Cengiz Bektash and Anatolian vernacular architecture in general. Uh, I want to remind everyone that they can ask questions through the chat window, those that are registered through Eventbrite on Zoom, and also those on social media, they can send their questions on Twitter uh, and Facebook through the uh, comment window. Uh, this series is intended to reassess the role and position of Turkish culture in the 21st century as it pertains to architecture and design. Our goal is to find aspects of the continuity in architecture and design from the modernist period to our contemporary period. Uh, and we're trying to find linkages and changes and transformations in Turkish culture uh, through the last 50 and 70 years. Uh, the Eunice Emre Institute uh, is responsible for uh, Turkish culture throughout the globe today. And we feel our effort in talking about architecture and design, which is one of the I think key aspects of Turkish culture over the last 1,000, 1,500 years uh, needs to be reflected in our activity here in the 21st century. I'm happy to join you actually uh, in uh, Niksar, Tokat, Turkey, which is where my family is from. So I'm joining you from really the heart of Turkey and the heart of Anatolia. That's why you can see, and there's some noises outside. I'm in the, uh, in the neighborhood here in Niksar, which is a very old Danishmed town from a thousand years History. So today uh, we have Mert Eiler. Uh, let me just do a quick uh, background on Mert. Mert, I know for a very long time, actually, uh, through our little relationship with uh, Nevzat Sayin and Cengiz Bektash. Uh, Mert is a 1995 graduate of the Istanbul Technical University. Uh, then he moved on in 1997 uh, to the Mimar Sinan University to get his master's degree uh, in. Um, uh, which is construction culture. Uh, later in the 2000s and the 2004s, he moved on to uh, more uh, computational design. Uh, in 2007, uh, in the late 2000s, he worked uh, especially with Cengiz Bektash and Nevzat Sayin. Nevzat Sayin is a key figure in the continuation of uh, vernacular architecture in Turkey as it relates to modernism, as it relates to contemporary conditions. Uh, he's won awards, Matt. He won the 2012 Architect, uh, Architera Young Architects Award. He's won 40 under 40 awards for the European context. Uh, and uh, he created his own firm, uh, MEMA, in 2007, which then he moved to London uh, in 2017. Uh, Matt reflects uh, the current uh, wave of young architects. Now he's young a little bit older that are trying to balance uh, universal themes with Turkish themes. I think it's interesting that his position in London, he still uh, maintains his relations with Turkish culture. Merit is actually joining us from Turkey now, but is usually in London. So I also want to thank the Yunus Emre Institute, uh, Yunus Emre, Mehmet Karakuş for helping us with this organization of these events. I think they're important to speak in English about uh, Turkish architecture. Uh, today. So Matt will be speaking a little bit about Cengiz Bektash. Cengiz Bektash I knew personally. Uh, he was an important figure uh, in both the 1960s and 70s. Uh, I was responsible for uh, bringing his archive to the Salt Marlik and Design Archive and later on working with him on some exhibitions. So Matt, uh, you have the stage now. Thank you for coming today. We appreciate your time and we appreciate your knowledge. Matt Eyler. All right, thank you. Uh, 
Even when I want to share my screen, uh, I think um, uh, is it okay? Um, I do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Wait a minute. Okay. Mm. Oh, sorry, you can uh, oh. oh, no. I have a problem. You see. Okay, maybe later. Uh, oh. That screen it was we saw ah, it. all right okay uh, thank you thank you for your invitation and uh, many thanks um, Institute for hosting us and introducing us to the media platforms it's very important I think and um, again uh, it's quite difficult to talk about my uh, master's master about Bektash he's, uh, he's so uh, powerful figure in uh, daily life and uh, in architecture culture again. Actually, um, I uh, attach a map about my summary. Uh, here it is. And um, last week we talked about my uh, presentation with Gökhan. Uh, and uh, I have your questions in my mind, and I would like to start with Bektash. Okay. Um, and I want to. Hello. Hi. You okay. You need to share your screen. Everything is okay. No, we can't see your screen. Uh, share. Yes. Okay. Now we see your screen. Go ah, ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, um, Bektash, I want to um, talk with my map because um, uh, it's, it's a kind of uh, it's a road map for me. Uh, I would like to start with Bektash first. And again, Anatolia. Uh, I think Anatolia and the Kuzguncuk uh, is the same idea in his mind. And then uh, I want to talk vernacular. And um, after that, I want to talk my uh, practice. Um, uh, my first uh, uh, meeting uh, with Bektash in Gökçada. Uh, I can clearly say the team up, uh, which called Turkey uh, Mark or Angeli Bulushmas. Or full screen with this, hit the full screen button so we can see the full full video. Uh, I try. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah. Um, and um, team up is a very uh, progressive program uh, in Turkish architecture culture. Then uh, I, uh, for the first time, uh, we will uh, we uh, we were met there, but uh, I uh, it I haven't felt connected to Bektash because also uh, he uh, always talk about Anatolia and it's kind of it's a problem for me 
uh, not about the vernacular. It's a tradition-centered talk, I think. Then, um, uh, Nevzat, uh, who was influential for me at that time, it's the, it is still the same. This was similar for Kuzguncuk. I couldn't feel connected to his way of thinking. Uh, but I always, uh, I have always come across Bektash and his work, like today. For example, when I was walking around the Dacia nearly 10 years ago, uh, I felt strange on the sidewalk, on the cauldron. Then I look around and realize that I was in front of the Kangoton house. You can see on the uh, screen. It is very clear work and uh, still uh, you can see all the details. Um, Bektash, um, Bektash's work is very powerful. I believe in that. Um, um, another example, when I stopped the car in Bodrum and I told myself that I felt familiar with this building. Familiar, uh, familiar feelings with the Dacia. Then I saw the Ortakan settlement, another Bektash work. Uh, after that, uh, I uh, searched something about his work and I saw what a wonderful details about uh, his uh, brilliant work. It's a Turkish uh, language association building. Uh, I think uh, this is the thinking of Bektash, which I feel connected. And um, because he uh, educated in Munich uh, and uh, in Munich, uh, Munich education culture means, uh, I think, engineering and architecture talk together. And then, uh, uh, his first works after his return to Turkey at Meskut Military Lodgements is very inspiration for me. His, uh, and uh, I have a similar feelings for the Turk, Turk John Savas Anatolian Club Hotel and the Konrad's buildings of the uh, buildings. I guess I cannot explain Bektash as uh, if he's alone, but I can think of him as part of a group including John Sever, Konrad, and the Ataman. Um, they do not get in touch with each other, I, uh, but I may gather them in the same context. You can, you know, maybe you can gather them too. And this is, Anatolia for me, and this is a vernacular for me, and this is modernism for me in Turkey, in Turkey, or uh, in my mind. The act of gathering and ability to gather is the definition for architecture I believe in. Uh, I am trying to practice for my uh, architecture work in that idea. By the way, there is a time, I think, uh, Bektash was in between making and writing. Uh, this might be related to the disconnection between him and Turgut Uyar. Uh, also, Turgut Uyar is a um, brilliant uh, poet, which called uh, Ikinjini. Uh, after that, I think he preferred writing mostly. Um, for this reason, uh, while uh, I admire his first period works, uh, and I uh, nowadays and I am silent about his final works, um, but uh, I cannot deny that Bektash because he's so powerful and so hardworking people, and he has a very important place in architecture culture of Turkey. For this reason, I would like to share an important moment for me. I would like to invite you to a moment that cons cons consolidated my faith in anonymous knowledge. 
uh, and also you can see um, is, uh, the details and the settlement about the Aphrodisias annex. Uh, this building, uh, they called Sarkusan uh, factory building. Uh, uh, there, yeah, and someone uh, know what names that and uh, Kuzguncuk mean for me and for my life. On one of those days, I was looking for an answer to the questions about the building and, and building uh, details. <sighs> Uh, was facade and was detailed for a long post processing. Um, I realized I uh, I realized everything after I came across with a building uh, and the detail and the long structure definition. And I had aha! Uh -huh. I noticed that the building was designed by James Bektash. Uh, I was surprised. I didn't know it before. Uh, the structure is a metal envelope and details in uh, Sarkusan were the most plain work of Bektash. Uh, everything fell into place there, both details, architecture, architect, Nezat and Kuzguncuk. None of these actors matter. Inspiration is a know-how method as much as the others. And I remember how I felt at that moment. The inspiration had a greatly important importance than the rest. Uh, that inspiration brought the same industrial knowledge. Uh, and we designed the touch. Uh, it's another factory. Um, and I want to talk about the Anatolia. Jokan, uh, do you want to add something about uh, Bektaş history or something else? Any it's question? A this trajectory that you speak about, uh, I think is, is for me um, important because he, he, he kind of matured with this group of modernists that were, that were educated in this modernist theme in the 1960s and 70s. You know, Bektash in Munich, Ataman went to London, Konarov was also in London, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, uh, John Sever, probably the least uh, of that, but he had a modernist education also coming in and out. So this trajectory of this group uh, and this, uh, the fact that when they went through that modernist education and then had to deal with this Turkish culture in a way or form, which I find, uh, you know, uh, this is a kind of puzzling issue. I mean, there's Sibel Bozdoğan and, yes. and Estra, um, Akçan, I believe, uh, you know, they, they focus a bit on the Turkish modernist trajectory, but I said that and these this kind of localism. Why did it emerge? What reason did it emerge? Was it political? Was it ideological? Was it technical? Uh, was it, uh, in some ways, what you're about to talk about, a narrative? Was it about coming from literature and writing? I think this is kind of the understudied area, and this is the linkage to Turkish culture that we need to speak about. So I think I, I, I'm very intrigued by. Uh, specifically this uh, writing aspect, because I think writing uh, for Bektash was an important uh, activity. Exactly. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I want to talk about his writing uh, session and maybe... Um, uh, so, uh, ah, all right, okay, wait a minute. Um, um, the Anadolu in Turkish, Anatolia or Anatoly uh, in Greek language. Uh, his writings and those in, on Anatolia might be Bektaş critics for modernism. I disagree, by the way, but it's very important. It's very important for his uh, practice. Uh, uh, I do not want to dive into etymological discussion, but Anatolia means sunrise, I think. It means east, and named after being a colony of Greek culture. It's also known as Asia Minor. Or we can say that is the starting point of Asia, which is some, um, and where's the borders and the nationality and, uh, or blah, blah, blah. The most important thing is as a start or an end. 
there were always battles, struggles, diversity, it's very important, and rough and tumble of politics. There was, there was always agony and civilization. Um, civilization is a very important point in Turkey uh, history. And uh, I, my uh, favorite uh, writer or my favorite uh, actor in Turkey, uh, Rantin, uh, which once said, water flows and finds its crack. Separating water and its crack leaves me incomplete, I think. For this reason, Anatolia can be read differently from inside Anatolia or from west to east or Europe to Asia. Um, reading from aging Greece uh, is the most familiar for me. I believe in that. And I think Bektaj was thinking similarly because he translated Sappho and said, he is mine. And um, Anatolia thinking and Kuzguncuk thinking is similar in Bektaş's mind, I think. It's crucial to talk about the Kuzguncuk because it is the um, uh, embodiment of Bektaş's thinking on Anatolia. And by the way, its popularity increases day by day. Um, and nowadays, I search uh, about this presentation and uh, some details on the screen and say some thesis I re read it. And um, Kuzguncuk is, they, they wrote, uh, Kuzguncuk is not a village anymore, but it is still like a village. In other words, the residents of Kuzguncuk reproduced Kuzguncuk as an imitation of a village within a city. And uh, I want to talk again, uh, civilization. This reproduction, this, reprodu this reproduction is a result of space production process that develops around the neighborhood narratives. And um, uh, also, uh, um, Kuzguncuk uh, so important for me because uh, where I distilled the architecture production of Sarkusan, Banwit, and Touch, and the place that led me to London. Yes, this is where I fell as a resident of Kuzguncuk and uh, what I understand from Kuzguncuk. And um, two years ago, uh, we, uh, uh, want to attend a, uh, a discussion about a, a hidden school. And uh, I wrote my history and uh, create another map. And it's a graph commons methodology I used. And uh, you can find on the graph commons uh, network and I wrote the school, school as a body. Can we say the school corresponds to everyday life? The echoes unable to criticize the actual situation, define learning method, knowledge, and pollution for teaching, exchanging knowledge and research. And we don't have an answer yet, but we are in search of it. And you can see my research on the screen. Uh, my architecture practice transformed after the graduation in Kuzguncuk. I've met, I've learned that I need to draw endlessly in order to reach the closest representation of my imagination. Moreover, uh, Kuzguncuk was a place that I was learning art practice, thinking practice, artist studios, internal and external gatherings accompanied with literature and poetry. Uh, at the same time, with this, with this intense period, I was wondering if I could go back to school for a doctoral study. It was possible, however, I was attracted to professional architecture practice. And now, 
and this is the second part, and uh, this this was the second part, and it's a Kuzguncuk and Anatolia means for the uh, Bektash and for me, and um, maybe Gökhan say another break. Do you want to talk about the Anatolia or something else? I think the Anatolia question, uh, we had a very interesting comment uh, by Banu Uchak uh, in, I believe it was Instagram, where she uh, ah, yeah about the fact that the Anatolian vernacular uh, was a thematics, a epistemology of this group. And then it kind of disappeared uh, for like 20, 30 years. And it kind of, of course, we have Nevzat Sayin's continuation, that Hantu Mertekin's continuation of of certain themes, but it largely disappeared in architectural practice. Maybe Gyokan Abjolu had some aspects. Also, yeah. Uh, but uh, basically, it was uh, not very popular, not very applied uh, uh, up in, you know, from the 80s to the 2000s. And then only now, with your generation, perhaps, uh, is it starting to, and as a kind of building technology. So I think it's important that you know, somebody like Marit Ilar uh, has a building technology expert and also somebody in computational design uh, has the ability to kind of mix these things two together. So I think this was a very important part of your generation's ability to take the Anatolian vernacular into a new 21st century direction. That's why I think uh, Banu's comments I found very relevant and important. And perhaps the younger generation now that are in their 20s have a similar approach. All right, again, and um, uh... Maybe the next uh, full screen, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Here's the screen. Yeah. And vernacular. It's very hard question, and it's it. Uh, what is the difference about the tradition and the vernacular? Uh, where the vernacular stars and where the tradition traditional end, or where the traditional stars are vernacular star end. Uh, is it possible to explain with our critique for backdash and with memorandum practice? Uh, nearly three or four years have passed uh, in London and Istanbul together. Uh, I'm settling into this space more and more every year. It's a, it's a second phase of my practice with London. I'm getting to know the new me while I'm chasing after the things that presumably forget. I always re recall myself to that very first moment, somewhere between neither harder nor easier emotions. Luckily there is curiosity. And curiosity and vernacular is a similar maybe for me. And then, oh, sorry, again, stop. Uh, I want to talk first uh, with um, Karakaya's living in Bodrum. Uh, maybe you know the Zeynep, Zeynep Aksoy and David Cornell. And, yeah, I've, uh, uh, I've stayed in this house many times. Ah, really? <laughs> and um, Zeynep and uh, David and my uh, my best friend uh, uh, together call me and uh, they need a settlement about uh, near to old village, uh, which called Karakaya. And, and I saw metal of construction stone walls, stone walls and construction steels, uh, craftsmanship definitions were transferred through the fast flowing production process in Bodrum or maybe in Turkey. The structure itself, which was stonewall, was turned into a kind of coating material with the regional regulation. The approved volumes of the project and the realized volumes had become another surplus producer. And for, year, for four years, our efforts are still going on. In the meantime, local governments in Bodrum were we are we are united under TV. This affected the process for project. Previously, acquire, acquired construction rights were re-examined 
in this process, we had to apply for a renovation license several times. At the beginning, we started off with a design reconstructor model. However, nowadays we are in an irregular process uh, directed by the rules of the touristic seasonal demands the village. Here it is. And uh, Levin's uh, started. Uh, Zeynep and Aslı uh, nowadays um, there. And uh, I want to uh, share my another uh, presentation. Uh, 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 I see my uh, share again. Here it is. Share it. Okay. And um, I, I went to talk with my London uh, practice. London has attracted me since the beginning, rediscovering the joy. Joy is very important in London. And it's just like life in Istanbul in the uh, 20s or new millennium. When I saw British Library, it's very, it was very impressive. Uh, I said, here it is, a modernism, modernism different from continental Europe rough and thick, uh, uh, sorry, and rough and thick volume of British Library and Barbican also. Um, and after that, uh, I walked every day, uh, nearly 10 kilometers per day. And I want to talk another project, uh, which called Call. And Cole was born within this living and brought us the London Festival of Architecture for Open Boundary two years ago. And, uh, and maybe uh, it's a discussion session and call opens of daily life. And it's a kind of restaurant project in uh, Fulham Broadway. Uh, I suppose call is a res residue of the times I've spent in uh, London. Dirty, dark, smoggy, smoke filled, having remained with an industrial town like essence. When I saw a uh, bronze handrail in British Library, this sameness tell me a great integrity all over London a whole of archetypes that are made massive. It was like a lexicon. Daily life was almost like an instruction guide, despite the buffering effect they create. Even parks were like places of the call. And I would like to share a 300 square meter work that holds everything collected during the walks and journeys I've mentioned about. And also, uh, uh, maybe you can know that place in Fulham, it's a best mangal or Kahia London, but we called Cole. Um, uh, I want to talk another project, um, say Genedos, it's a kind of collective uh, living there. Um, this is not a story of an escape from urban life to rural life. If my definition is needed, this is a kind of co-living space, Ex an experience of combining the Mediterranean life with urban living and inspiration from Likia. It's important for us to make space for prefabrication and industry production where, where possible and relating them to the Mediterranean cash. And uh, it is important that this becomes a self-supporting network. 
Um, uh, I, uh, in a very important thing is uh, Genedos wrote a letter. He said, director of Genedos, uh, Alper, wrote a letter uh, three years ago, maybe. Uh, but uh, uh, I think the greatest challenge we confronted, he said, sorry, uh, he said uh, the greatest challenge they confronted as COP funders is the lack of reflex for common action weakened by the codification of the system from past to present. This week, this week reflects generate doubts and disbelief from the beginning with the question, how will it even happen? And a uh, very important thing is it's a daily life. And uh, this is not a story, but uh, it is important, ta important that it becomes a self-supporting network. Um, and uh, 2019 and the World Architecture Festival uh, selected us to uh, shortlist. And uh, another shortlist uh, is a kind of uh, toy. It's a wooden toy that uh, we called Salamander because Kerem uh, feels like uh, a salamander. He said, Kerem is nearly four years old. But uh, salamander reflects a range of subjects from the sense of place to design research with the network of its user and crafter. User means Kerem, crafter means Okanus or Muratustan. Uh, with respect to know-how, materiality, and life of the space, us, Mama London, offers a modest and joyful sense of playing with Salamander. And um, uh, AI UK in, is a, another uh, organization in uh, London, and they uh, organize a, another uh, competition and uh, we attended and maybe shortlist it that's it um, after that uh, london and istanbul working together uh, we want to say different between the borders it's very important for me and London Festival of Architectures uh, team, team is boundaries. And we uh, attend a group, um, Zeynep organized or moderated uh, meeting or discussion and Dilek and Alper joined us. And in open boundary, uh, we aim to point out that boundaries, identities, and livings are unbounded. It is possible to say that wherever you live could be Anatolia, or Turkey, or Kuzguncuk, or Göbekli Tepe, or London. After seeing the moving Mars exhibition in Design Museum, I felt like I discovered a new place. What can be done there? how can we build there, or how can we start all over? Were the question in mind. Uh, and um, all that topics, buildings and discussions, and the maybe uh, process still going on. And I believe in that um, uh, there's no borders, uh, I think, only the livings. Nowadays, uh, we focus on a new relation with Mehmet Konrad and Isan Bilgin. And I uh, explained about uh, Konrad's building. The buildings that we know as a Karayol and which one is designed Konrad. And I hope we will 
e, build again and Conor Alp and I and Bilgin e, meet e, at the same table. Uh, evet, that's all I think. And this is the last work uh, uh, which called Cross. Uh, it's a kind of artist studio. It's a Salem, it's a photographer, and uh, we designed the building. It's a kind of renovation. But um, uh, Salem, uh, who, who whose intention was to have a studio space to live and work it, there are several meanings in flux cross was designed to motivate the client to settle and work within a short distance to his residence and um, cross represents a steel structure that organizes inner gardens on two different levels the second structure is the masonry for the enclosed services spaces. The artist studio is elevated on structural stone, bridge with court and steel frames, and finished with timber roof structure. And the most important the project is initiated and completed during the COVID-19 pandemic conditions, uh, which makes it harder to finalize the process. Uh, limiting material use was another central aspect. It lowered cost and time, the number of teams to coordinate, and allowed the materials of serve multiple function. Um, uh, wait a minute. I ended the share. And you can't, that's it. Uh, I think. Again, and yeah, uh, everything is okay for me. And and nowadays, uh, uh, um, all right. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. So it's, uh, you know, I think what's interesting to me, um, you know, we started this discussion, it's about Cengiz Bektash and his mm. vernacular, but I want to work kind of backwards because you made an interesting proposition saying that basically that you've arrived in London with uh, this uh, practice. Um, and that's another subject, why you went to London, I'm not going to discuss that, but uh, you said that you know you're taking the Anatolian vernacular to London, um, and so let's kind of work backward from there. And now, for you, the vernacular is it a material thing? Is it a? There's a question we had on one of the chats here, and they're asking, you know, in terms of the vernacular, do you see it as a? Is it a design approach or is it a material approach? So when you did go to London, and you you have a practice that extends between London and Turkey still. What do you think you brought there? Was it the materiality or the or kind of design approach? And what do you feel uh, that was vernacular about it uh, in terms of an architecture? Um, uh, I said curiosity is my vernacular because I am focused on the shadows. I am um, asking so much questions and um, um, I, I have no idea about the uh, English. Görünenin uh, ardını yoklamak. Yeah, the, the, it the, is my methodology, I think. Um, that methodology then becomes almost a kind of mix of narrative and epistemology in some ways. I mean, it kind of goes beyond a kind of architectural approach. And that kind of leads me to the next question, which is, you know, uh, when Bektash, he left modernism as an architecture and he immediately moved into uh, vernacular, but he moved into it as a literature, as a writing. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote a series of books in the 70s and 80s and 90s about Anatolian vernacular architecture. Um, and I know he did, you know, we, we talked we talked with him about the, some of the uh, his designs that integrated the, the vernacular, especially in Bodrum, which you talked about also. 
Um, so what do you feel is the connection there in terms of Turkish culture but about the fact that Bektaş did it as writing initially and it also kind of parallels what you're saying in that for you it's kind of just beyond architecture. Can you speak a little bit about that? Uh, Bektaş wants, wanted to write about the Anatolian traditions maybe but uh, after the Munich uh, he uh, he, I think uh, it's the best writings there. So critics uh, in architecture. He wrote the first book I ever wrote. In critics in architecture, uh, it's um, not useful in Turkey, yeah. but it's very important maybe uh, which is critics and which is critics in architecture. And this is the first book he wrote, and very important. After that, he wrote poets, uh, sorry, poems, and the, um, um, ha, uh, about the uh, daily life. But daily life means uh, hawk sanity. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I don't agree with his arts. Yeah, and I don't agree his uh, ideas. I think uh, I prefer uh, his. Just let me jump first in there. Pace. Yeah, because he, you know, he was doing this very severe modernist architecture. You know, the building that you showed, uh, and then all of a sudden he moves into this space of writing and poetry and. And 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 you know trudging about various Anatolian towns and making sketches. It seems very uh, uh, very radical. This shift. What do you think was behind that shift? Uh, uh, and 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 this kind of jumping into that vernacular through the window, through the practice of literature and 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 poetry and and and, and ethnographic research in some ways. What do you think he was? What happened there? Uh, I, uh, I, we talked, and, and this might be related to this connection between uh, Bektaş and Turgut Rea, I think. Hmm. And it's a kind of uh, competition uh, with Bektaş and Uyar. And hmm. also, you know, Uyar is the favorite uh, actor in uh, poetry in my uh, practice and in my daily life. and. You might just want to explain who he is for some of the uh, our audience that don't that don't know who he is. Can you just give it two sentences? Turgut uh, Rüya is a is a Kinjini is a favorite uh, progressive uh, literature uh, group, and uh, it's like it's a kind of collective, and. Uh, uh, Ikinjini is, is a, um, uh, I am uh, not enough uh, English. Uh, uh, Say it in Turkish, I'll translate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, şey, uh, Ikinjini uh, yeni bir akım ortaya koymaya çalışıyor. Yani gündelik hayat ile. Uh, ve uh, olan biteni bu halk dilinden kurtarmak aslında niyeti ve bunu yazmıyorlar ama yaptıklarıyla ortaya koyuyorlar açıkçası. Right. So it was less about writing and more about practice you're saying in terms of like a kind of uh, and I think it is a, that's my second question if nobody else I'm uh -huh. very happy to ask. You talked about the everyday and daily life as a kind of uh, uh -huh. practice and I think this is very important because this is the everyday and daily life and focusing on daily life, Anatolian vernacular, and somehow, somehow guided by that in many ways. Uh -huh. uh, uh, can you describe the, 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 and the fact that I think for you, that daily life being a kind of proposition in your practice in London. So it's interesting that you're able to take this kind of, maybe that's what the vernacular in Anatolia transformed is, is a kind of very much a attention to daily life. Um, you can't, um... I think um, it's same. Um, uh, my favorite uh, writer is, you know, the Tampanar. Mm -hmm. uh, Tampanar is a, a mod. I think it's a modernist writer and uh, is the masters of uh, 
Pamuk. And we he said, or Ahmed, yeah, or And uh, sorry. And um, he said, the clock is the time itself. Its motion right. is a space. And the regulator is a man. He said man, and it's a whatever you uh, you say. And uh, it's a very important thing. It's Saatin kendisi zaman yürüyüşü mekan ayarı insan. And uh, uh, when I uh, heard it, and uh, I'm nearly shocked because uh, space, uh, time, and the person or the man, and uh, there. And how can we uh, combine all both of them? It's very important, and it's it's too hard. And um, in um, after uh, I practice. Uh, with yoga and it's a um, uh, and focus on the moment and moment means uh, the future and the now and the past uh, live together at that moment and and we have to focus on the moment to produce the future and uh, because of that everyday life Wait, are you are you saying in some ways this Tanpanar through Uyar and Bektash that, that there was this kind of almost a focus on the moment and a kind of uh, 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 using literature as a way to get at that and uh, uh, and and this kind of informed in some ways your approach to to the everyday as a kind of vernacular itself is that you know just yeah it's I'm not sure Bektash uh, is a kind of uh, 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 practicing yoga or uyar or tampanar but uh, uh, every uh, actor uh, focus on the moment I think uh, produce to future because future is a kind of modernism problem and uh, and uh, or uh, in in precario uh, you have to produce your future and it's a kind of social problems uh, behind that so idea. In some, ways, in some ways, Bektash almost dropping architecture, this modernist, severe, you know, reinforced concrete, brutalist aesthetic. Uh -huh. He at some point said, there's no future in this. You know, he, he made some great buildings in the late 60s, early 70s, and kind of, I guess, this move to literature and the move to the word was maybe his his way to kind of really digest some of the impact of what he had done and maybe try to go forward, trying to create a balance there. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Um, uh, I want to share my uh, screen again, and I want to talk about the concrete because it's very universal or timeless uh, material. And it's a, I don't know, uh, where it starts and where it's end. Um, here it is. Um, um, uh, uh, in 2019, uh, Notre Dame burned, Mot Notre Dame's roof burns wooden and nearly wooden means um, uh, uh, produce uh, 12th or 13th century. And uh, we could then uh, a proposal uh, which calls uh, uh, gargoyles meet brutalism. Uh, uh, in Istanbul, uh, I um, saw the um, brutalist concrete or um, Nezat's works, and I uh, search with that, and uh, uh, I saw the uh, Bektaş works also, and uh, Turkish liter literature. Uh, association uh, Türkiye Türk Dil Kurumu ofisinde de they use that concrete and maybe uh, concrete is the new stone and in New London 
uh, uh, architecture groups uh, created an exhibition about the new uh, the new stone age. I think the concrete uh, is the new material for the future from the back and uh, at the new at this moment. And we created a uh, concrete uh, flying buttresses with the uh, concrete. And uh, we want to supporting the main structure. It also evolved the spire with coarse, rough concrete surfaces. And I believe in, um, Ölümsüz uh, olmak. Uh, uh, I have no idea about in English. Maybe Zeynep. Uh, 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 every uh, civilization create their signature with the stone, with the uh, whatever they build, and they want to live forever. Right, and right. because of yeah because of that uh say maybe it's, it's a problem for me and uh i want to uh nowadays i want to uh, create the end because uh we have to create our end and um i saw Genghis Bektaş's last works i say right. he uh, uh uh, designed the Mula Museum. Uh, I don't want to talk about that because he uh, designed the Aphrodisias Annex. It's a brilliant project there and brilliant building there, brilliant space. And uh, but how can he design that museum? There is right. no um, process there. There is no space. There is no materiality. Um, I don't believe in um, his last works. Right. And by the way, it's a materiality, uh, concrete, and the person. And we, I think we have to focus on the moment for the future because right. of that. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I think the last comment about concrete, I mean, uh, just to kind of complete this discussion. Um, I had a discussion with Genghis Bey uh, about his uh, uh, buildings in Bodrum in the late, uh, these buildings built in the 70s, and the ability to use concrete in vernacular as a way to create sustainability. I think, mm. you know, this, this, this vernacular architecture in the context of sustainability requires you to do some research on materials and things like this. But at the same point, as you quite mentioned, and I want to kind of complete with that, I mean, the whole issue with the vernacular and architecture in Turkey and the Anatolian vernacular, which we, which we talked about today, is it's just not an issue of, it's not a material uh, culture issue. It's a very much a, mm -hmm. uh, the issue that is having to do with the holistic approach to Anatolian Turkish culture that forces you to look at literature, philosophy, time. Uh, it's not so simple. Uh, I think the, the land that we live here in Turkey and Anatolia and I think it's the conundrum that Bektaş uh, also faced and was, I think, able to get through over a long uh, career and work. And I think you're sort of kind of cogitating your way through this, uh, through this effort also between you going back and forth to London and this kind of thing. So, um, you know, th this issue is, 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 is not a simple issue. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to speak to you today about Genghis Bektaş's work, his approach to Anatolian vernacular, because I learned uh, that you know the, 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 this is is is, a, is is something that maybe we as architects need to uh, think more about in the context of Turkish culture in general. Uh, so this generation that you're involved in, I think, is is doing that. So thank you, Mert Ilar from Emma London, for participating in our discussion today, talking a little bit about your work uh, in uh, the last five or ten years. Um, uh, and I want to thank uh, uh, again Eunice Emre Institute for allowing us. Uh, a platform to talk about architecture and design and allowing us to kind of look at it multiculturally. Um, we continue these discussions on architecture and design uh, over the coming months where we're talking maybe uh, about architecture, maybe about design, maybe about the decorative arts and craft, 
but we hope to uh, acquaint our uh, 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 visitors and our, and our followers in London and the English speaking world about how Turkish culture is continuing today. So thank you very much, Mert. Uh, uh, thank you too. Thank you very much for everybody that came today. If you have any questions, you can always ask through the Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram accounts of Ye Londra. And um, uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, in our next discussion. Thank you very much. See you soon.